So we already talked about this previously. Um, we can use radioactive isotopes and their presence in materials to figure out how old stuff is. All right, uh, so as, again, as we talked about previously, we use carbon-14 uh, to date things that were once living, like plants or animals, um, because uh, they're constantly consuming carbon via carbon dioxide or eating plants. Somehow, some way, they're getting more carbon in them. And the moment they die, that carbon-14 is at the highest amount it will ever be, and then it just decays from that. So you can figure out how much is left in there, you can figure out how old something is. And uh, it just so happens that carbon-14 has a good half-life, 5,730 years, for figuring out stuff about, you know, human history. Okay. One cool thing, at least I think, is cool about carbon-14, is, okay, with a half-life of 5,730 years, that seems like a long time, but in some respect, that's a very short amount of time. Like the age of the Earth. How old is the Earth? How, how, how long ago did Earth form from the remnants of a supernova? Does anybody know? I, I think it's about four and a half. Four and a half billion years old. All right, 4.54? 4.54 billion years old. All right, so it is uh, old. 5,730 years seems like old to us, but compared to the age of the Earth, that is a relatively short amount of time. And it turns out if all of the carbon-14, uh, not if, all of the carbon-14 that was collected on Earth when it was forming, uh, when our solar system formed, is long gone. 5,730, divide 4.5 4 billion, divided by 5,730, that's a lot of half-lives. All that carbon-14 is long gone. So based on that half-life, we shouldn't have any carbon-14 left on Earth. It should all be gone. But uh, one cool thing is there's a reaction that occurs in the atmosphere that's constantly producing more carbon-14. So all the time, uh, Earth is being bombarded with cosmic rays. All right. Now, it's kind of a misnomer. Cosmic rays is mostly particles. So the entire time the sun and all the stars are doing their nuclear fusion reactions, um, they are ejecting particles, okay? Mostly protons, neutrons, some electrons, some other particles, but they're getting kicked out a lot, you know, for getting uh, shooting out of stars and our sun, and they come at Earth, okay, constantly. Most of those particles, most of the cosmic rays are directed towards the North and South Pole because of the Earth's magnetosphere. And that's what sets up the, you know, northern lights that you see, you know, the reds and greens and blues at the poles, okay? The cosmic rays come and they collide with air molecules, giving them energy. Electrons get excited to higher energy levels. They fall back down, they emit light, okay? So, uh, so the, when the neutrons hit nitrogen, and there happens to be a lot of nitrogen in the atmosphere, it does basically a nuclear reaction with nitrogen-14 and becomes carbon-14 and kicks off a proton. And so because of those cosmic rays and that constant bombardment of neutrons from the sun and other stars, but mostly our sun, we have a constant uh, source of carbon-14 that somehow gets incorporated in carbon dioxide, gets incorporated in plants, and then we eat